What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're gonna be going over a little ABG challenge for you. Let's see how good we are at interpreting ABGs, but it's not that simple. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about arterial blood gases in this video. And what I'm gonna do is challenge you as a lot of you are probably getting back into school. It's probably starting back up soon. A lot of you going into your, your second year of, of respiratory therapy school, and you're about to get into some critical care aspects of respiratory therapy. And ABGs are a critical um, foundational component of critical care. When you're manipulating mechanical ventilation, when you're deciding if you need to intubate somebody or not intubate somebody, uh, we have to understand arterial blood gases and to be able to interpret them appropriately. And that's what I'm gonna challenge you with in that this video. Now, before we jump into that, don't forget to look at the video description below. It'll take you to this page right here, the Respiratory Coach Academy, where you can find links to the TMC Bootcamp, the CSC Bootcamp to help you pass those MBRC exams on your first attempt. Uh, we also have a formulas course, a pharmacology course, and an arterial blood cast basic course and then our free resources right here. If you're not already uh, tuned in to the uh, Respiratory Coach Academy, go check out the free resources uh, uh, course right here. All you have to do is create an account, log in, you'll be in that course, you get all those resources for free and no cost to you. But let's talk about arterial blood gases for just a second. You see, what we're gonna do is we're gonna interpret this blood gas, but you're only gonna get two values to interpret it with. Okay, now I don't care so much about what the actual number is. There's a formula you can do to figure that out as well. What I'm more focused on is if I just told you that you had a patient with a pH of 7.30 and you had a bicarb of 24 and maybe you did or didn't know what the CO2 was, could you interpret this blood gas? And what I hope to achieve by the end of this video is that, you know what, I don't need all three values to know what's going on with my patient. I can usually do that with just two. Let me break it down for you. Now, if you wanna to try to go through this video and, and, and do all of these, then just pause the video every time I bring a new one up, okay? And then uh, that'll give you a chance to work through it, and then I'm going to explain, okay? So, um, like I said, pause the video now. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, when you come back, you'll hear this explanation. What we know right now is that we have a pH of 7.30. That is an acidosis. So we know that this blood gas is going to interpret as some type of acidosis. Now you're saying, okay, well, is it respiratory or is it metabolic? Well, we don't know what our CO2 is. So we don't really, without the number, you may say, well, how do I know it's respiratory? How do I know it's metabolic? Well, let's just think about this. We do know that our bicarb here is normal. If our bicarb is normal, then there is only one component left causing the acidosis, and that has to be the arterial CO2. So we know that we here have a high CO2 causing an acidotic pH with a normal bicarb. This is going to be an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. That's how this one would interpret. That's the only thing it can interpret as. So let's look at another one here. Uh, pH 7.30. PaCO2 is 40. It's starting off simple here because we're just going to reverse it now, right? So um, what is our bicarb? We don't know. How does this blood gas interpret? It doesn't matter what the bicarb is. We have an acidotic pH. We have a normal CO2. So who's causing the acidosis? It's gotta be the bicarb being decreased. Now, of course, I'm assuming here, no other information, no underlying cardiopulmonary disease process or, or anything like that. These are just straightforward blood gas interpretations. But in this case, this is what it has to look like, okay? Your patient is acidotic because of a decreased bicarb. So what's that gonna interpret as? 
because the CO2 is normal, this is an uncompensated metabolic acidosis, the exact opposite of the previous one. How do we know that? Because our CO2 is normal, which means the bicarb has to be the one causing the acidotic pH. That's how it works. Got a few more for you here. Here, we see something a little different. Now we see an alkalotic pH with a normal CO2. So we're already tracking here, right? You're like, okay, I see what's happening here. Why are we alkalotic? Not because of the CO2. It's got to be because of an elevated bicarb. So we know that this is going to interpret as uncompensated because this is normal metabolic alkalosis. That's the interpretation for this one. One more pretty simple one here, then we're going to switch it up for you. Uh, pH 7.50. Again, we're alkalotic. We know the blood gas is going to be ending in an alkalotic phrase. That is gonna, it's an alkal, something, something alkalosis is the interpretation of this blood gas. Just knowing that the pH is 7.50. Now, we see we have a normal bicarb. What's happening here? Oh, that's right. We're alkalotic here because our CO2 is decreased. Maybe our CO2 here is 28. And now we go, okay, I see that now. 7.50, 28, 24, uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. That's how that one works. Now, let's switch it up here just a little bit. Because you see, this one is different. See, we have a normal pH. This is normal. Okay? And we have an elevated CO2. Hmm. How? How's this going to interpret? We have an elevated CO2 with a normal pH. Now, let's just think about this for a second. If you had an elevated CO2 with a normal bicarb, then your pH would be acidotic. But that's not the case here. We have an elevated CO2 that should be causing an acidosis, but it's actually yielding a normal pH. And the only way that can happen is if your bicarb is not normal, but also elevated. You see, the CO2 rises, it causes an acidosis, and our bicarb brings it back up. Now, I know that I put this right on the normal. I, it's probably not fair that I did that. Let's say this was 7.38. Now it makes a little bit more sense because we're normal on the acidotic side. CO2 is causing an acidosis, but the bicarb has fully compensated for it. So we have an elevated bicarb, maybe somewhere, somewhere around 35. Now it makes sense. And now we see that this is a fully compensated respiratory acidosis. Well, why is it fully compensated? Because our pH is normal. Why? Why is it a respiratory acidosis? Because the CO2 is what's causing the acidosis. But it's not, Joe. It's in the normal range. That's exactly right. But the question is why? Why are we in the normal range on our pH when we have an elevated CO2? It can only be because of one thing. The bicarb has compensated over time for the elevated CO2. This, bi this blood gas right here is very consistent with uh, somebody diagnosed with COPD and progressed to a state to where they live with chronic hypercapnia. The bicarb elevates to compensate for that high CO2 to maintain a normal pH. That's a fun one. I like those. Oh, we've got this one here. Now, what do we got? Now we have an acidotic pH, and we have a decreased CO2. Now, if CO2 goes down, then wouldn't that cause our pH to go up? The answer to that is yes, 
If pH go, if CO2 goes down, then pH goes up. But that's not what's happening here, is it? Our pH is actually decreased. We have a decreased pH, an acidotic pH. So how do we get an acidotic pH with a decreased CO2? Okay. The bicarb must be significantly reduced. So we may be sitting down here with a bicarb of 10. That bicarb is what is causing the acidosis. The CO2 is trying to compensate for the metabolic acidosis, but it can't do so effectively or it hasn't done so fully because we're still at a state of acidosis. So we know without even having this value right here, question mark, I know it is significantly decreased and I know that I'm looking at a partially compensated metabolic acidosis. Hold on. Why is it partially compensated? Why is it not fully compensated? It's not fully compensated because the, at the pH is still acidotic. That's the difference between fully and partially compensated. Is it in the normal range or is it still abnormal with the compensatory mechanism moving to try to compensate for our decreased bicarb? Partially compensated metabolic acidosis. All right, one more here. Oh, now we don't get a pH. Curveball, no pH here, right? We've got a CO2 that is elevated. We have a bicarb that is decreased. Okay, hold on a second. High CO2 will cause an acidosis, okay? Decreased bicarb will cause an acidosis. So what do we know our pH is going to be? Acidotic, because both components are leading to and causing an acidotic state. So we know that this one is going to interpret as a mixed acidosis. Our pH is probably somewhere down here at 7.1 or somewhere like that. This is a mixed acidosis. I don't even need the pH to know that that's what I'm dealing with. Because if both of these numbers are causing and, lead, and going in the direction of causing an acidosis, then it's a mixed acidosis, period. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is that if you can understand this like this also, if this is making sense, then it should make sense. And this is how you can use this beyond this little fun little challenge here of how do you interpret blood gases with just two values. Um, this is also valuable information because if I was to put this up here and say that your pH was 7.50 and your CO2 was 52 and your bicarb was 12, you would go, hold on, hold on, Joe. That doesn't work like that. You can't have CO2 rising, causing an acidosis, bicarb dropping, causing an acidosis, and your pH being alkalotic. It doesn't work like that. You know what this is? This is a lab error. And you need to redraw the sample and rerun it because the, 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 the lab, the machine made an error like they sometimes do. But you're smart enough to know this, all, this whole thing together, it doesn't jive because I understand arterial blood gases. I understand how these two components work together to yield our pH. And that's how you can interpret arterial blood gases with just two values. If this was hard for you and you feel completely lost, then I highly encourage you to check out the link below and go look at that and go through that first basic arterial blood gas interpretation course where we explain the balancing act between CO2 and bicarb and how they work together to yield pH. If you found this super easy, then congratulations. You're well on your way to ripping your critical care 
um, rotations and finishing out your RT school on a high note. Now, I'm Respiratory Coach. Hey, stay here with me on YouTube. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, please. Please help me grow this community. Let us grow together. Um, also hit the like and leave me a comment. It's super appreciative. If you have any questions you want me to answer, throw them in there and I'll do my best to get to them. Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. You can always send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. If you have any questions for me, any questions about the boot camps, any questions about prep, MBRC prep exam um, practice or anything like that, send me an email. I want to talk to you. Hey, remember at the end of every single day, average is easy. Don't be it.